Okay, welcome to another Graphics 2 tutorial, and today I kind of want to talk about an interesting little hack you can use with the uh, grid mode mirror to uh, draw mirrored things. So, if you're drawing like uh, spaceships from a top-down game, or you're drawing like I don't know a sword or anything that's symmetrical, vertically or horizontally, um, you can do your outlines, and then you can you know of course shade it so it's not pillow shaded or anything. Uh, after you get done having your mirrored outline. So first thing I guess to do is to make sure you know your canvas size. Um, I'm going to do, we'll do 128 by 128. Good safe power of 2 resolution. Uh, it'll need to be um, divisible by 2 though. You don't want something that's odd width or this uh, won't work. Okay, so we'll set that and I'm going to zoom in. That's good. Okay. Um, we know this the size is 128 by 128, so now I'm going to hit E to go into the effects mode. I'm going to set the grid by right clicking, and X is going to be 64. I'm going to be mirroring along, um, mirroring along the vertical here. I'm not going to snap. I do want to show it though. Oops. Ah, that's not what I want. Let me go back in there. I forgot to set the Y. Y is going to be the full width of 128, and that way we're going to get two tiles. Okay. And this is red right now, so I'm going to adjust the palette by pressing P, and then I'm going to get rid of some of this. I think it's drawing from this pink here for the grid, so I'll hit Delete to insert the graphic user interface colors back in. Now it's a little easier to see. Okay, and I'll hit the... Uh, and basically, um, the way this is going to work is when you turn tile mode on there's an option to look for tiles that are mirrored so as long as these two tiles appear mirrored it's going to count them as mirrored and you'll draw on one and it'll do the mirror on the other so I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to put a dot on this side and a dot on that side and that makes these two tiles mirrored copies of each other so when it detects it we'll press E to go in here when tile map detects this um, it will see these as mirrored. You'll see what I mean here. You can see how we can draw mirrored things. Oh, that seemed really slow. Oh, anyway. I'm going to undo, 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 and now I'm just going to begin kind of drawing a sword here. I'm going to use my arrow keys to make sure that it's all the way at the top. Uh, let's let's think, think splines start out with. I don't want to have it too. Let's see if I can. I'd like a little bit sharper than that, but eh, for now that's yeah. I'm just gonna, and I'm not gonna narrate every little change I make anymore. I mean, I have other other tutorials to watch that are basically gonna clue you in on some of the keystrokes and stuff I use. So I am gonna take this in a little bit, I think, though. See if that looks a little better. Yeah, that's better. So I'm just going to begin using the various tools here to draw a sword. Uh, and just so you kind of get an idea, and I'm sure you already do get an idea of how this is working. Oops. Actually, you know, it might be kind of nice. Eh, I'm not going to do it. I was going to do a barb there, but I decided not to. And one thing I notice when people do swords is they want to never leave enough handle on them. They always want to draw these short, stumpy little handles that are too wide and too short. So, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Basically, might come up a little bit, just to give a little bit of a... There we go. And then we're going to come off with... Here, I'm going to try a curve again, or a spline, rather. Um, the idea is to kind of put it where you want it, and then, of course... wants to curve kind of weird, but that curve might work. Okay, let's see if I can put it on the end about there. Yeah, it's kind of, eh, it's a little bit ugly. Let's try it one more time. I don't know if this is going to be any better, but I don't want such a, yeah, I don't really want such a childish looking curve. It's kind of cartoony. I don't like it. Do something a little bit more elegant, I guess. 
something like you would uh, yeah, maybe I'll just call this a free drawing session I'll sit here and watch me draw but some people might like that so I guess it's all in what you want to do that's going to be kind of a ridiculously wide guard but we can adjust that later I'm just toying with ideas right now so um, I probably won't even edit this out you probably noticed that I don't edit my videos too much mostly just because I figure if I make a mistake and you see me make it then it saves you kind of some of the time of maybe making the same mistake so for what it's worth what you see is what you get when I make these videos and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to I'm gonna shorten this a little bit so I'm gonna use the brush and if you right click the brush it'll chop off uh, what you draw and you can uh, maybe again uh, just a little bit more here. Um, yeah, if you right if you right select with the brush, it'll actually um, cut below the brush and pick the brush up, so it's not going to leave that original image. It, it gets rid of the original image, I should say. And I don't know. I might just do a full length drawing, and if people like it, they like it. I might do another one, and if they don't like it, then well, no obligation to keep doing them, I guess. And like I said earlier, people tend to make sword hilts way too stumpy. Let me zoom in here and go down. And that might even be the case here, but we'll see here. I mean, ideally, the longer the sword, this would probably be okay for a single hand sword, um, but people tend to give these really short, stubby little handles on them, and it just looks terrible, I think. This is actually a little bit on the stumpy side, too. I think for a single hand, it's more of maybe a knife type sword, but I think, uh, I think it'll be okay. And you can see really how this drawing mode comes in handy with this stuff. Maybe this dips down a little bit. I'm not sure if you're hearing a bunch of breathing noises in my mic or not, but I get the feeling you may be. Sorry about that in advance. Um, okay. So we kind of have a sword going. It's let me look at how. Do I want to go a little bit? That, do I like that sharper or not? Ah, we'll just leave it like that for now. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this kind of curve into the guard a little bit. See how that looks. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um. Yeah, I think I might actually extend that handle a little bit. I mean, it, it's fine for a one-handed knife, but I would like a nice little kind of pommel on the end of it. Um, you need a pommel, of course, to def defeat your en enemies rightly as you unscrew it and throw it at them. Uh, so that's important. So what I'm going to have to do is these are still symmetrical, so the tile recognizer will still recognize them. Um, but the most important thing I'm going to do is extend the height a little bit. Uh, what do I have? 128. Uh, we'll just do 160. It's going to give us a lot of. Uh, okay, that's fine. See if it. Okay. Well, you know what it's going to do is it's going to count these as another tile, and that's not really a problem. Um, kind of want to repeat. Why you no draw? Oh, that's a line. That's why. It. Aren't we getting any tiles here? Uh, I'm going to go into the effects and I'm going to turn them off. Uh, what did I say? One. Shoot, 160? Okay. Okay. Yeah, seems to be letting me. Seems to let me draw just fine now. I didn't intend for that shape actually, but let's see. If this is going to overpower it, yeah, I don't know. Does that pommel overpower that a little bit? Uh, might be just a touch. Let's see if I can. Oops, I forgot to select with my right. Uh, let's see if I can. Yeah, I think if we get rid of that. And like I said, for this drawing, I've had no 
pre-planning so what you're seeing is what you're getting uh, how long am I going on this here I'm only 20 megs big and only 10 minutes in so I think this is about where I want it for a sword do we want to add a little little bit of grip on this or not? I'm not sure here. Maybe. Kind of two might look nice. Um, always good to have a good grip on a sword. You don't want something just smooth. Yeah. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, so now it really doesn't matter um, because I'm going to begin shading this now. It really doesn't matter if this sword is... Well, actually, it does matter. We don't want it mirroring anymore, so... I'm going to turn on effects, turn off tile map, and you can see now we're not mirroring anymore. All right, I think I want to give this kind of a nice... kind of a nice copper. Uh, maybe, yeah. So I'm going to begin kind of filling in these lines here. Well, actually, it might be nice to turn the mirror on so I get both. That might save some time. Let's turn the mirroring back on. So hit E to go into effects, tile map, recognize one. Oops. And another good strategy is you don't always need to um, to outline first. Sometimes it's best just to take uh, what you're drawing as kind of a, a general shape and then, you know, begin shading that rather than just outlining and then trying to fill in. But for now, we'll do this. Uh, the blade, I would like kind of, I want the blade to be a nice, yeah, that might be all right. I would like a little bit, yeah, it's pretty steelish, I think. Uh, really? I don't want to go. And you know, when you outline with a dark color like this, it's almost like pillow shading, so I mean, it, it, you could argue it's a bit of, it's an element of your you know, style of your choice, but... Eh, for the sake of drawing this, I'm not gonna, not gonna be too picky about it. Okay, so the thing about metal is it has a lot of reflections. Well, at least polished metal has a lot of reflections. So you're gonna get bands of dark color that will kind of imply reflections in it, and you'll also see those dark bands in contrast with really white, bright reflections. So knowing that's kind of how metal looks. I guess we can begin shading this in. Uh, which is this? Actually, I don't want to do this. Yeah, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need my brightest color. I like to highlight with. Or actually, let's go one one darker. So we're gonna probably see a little light play on the top of this. We're gonna see some light probably play here, and some light play here. Oops, am I still mirroring? Yes, I am. Um, that's fine. Let me take that mirroring off. E key for effects, turn tile map off. Now, the moment we start modifying these without that on, we're going to start seeing that we can't get that mirror ever back on. So we're kind of past the point of no return in editing this. Um, this is probably going to have a very harsh, bright white to mark the... If I can get this up here. To mark the... This thing, whatever this is called. Uh, maybe it's a little bit too bright. Yeah, I'm going to have another one down here anyway. I like to do a, kind of a streak. This is kind of an implied uh, shine to this kind of stuff. It's just kind of a personal style that I've developed over the years. Some people do it, some people don't. Uh, we're just trying to kind of think about where the light would hit this stuff where it would catch it brightest and where it would come down. Okay. Now I want to begin using my my copper colors here. Actually these might be a little better copper. So we know we're going to have a bright spot all the way down. Um, I'm going to copy this. I'm not going to keep doing it manually the whole way down. So we're going to have what I want to do and I'm just kind of messing around at this point. Been messing around the whole time, actually. <laughs> There's that. I want to have a a, uh, a darker reflection in here, and then I'm going to come back in with this. This should probably be a little darker too. 
because you're going to reflect a skyline which goes from uh, dark. You know, let me just give you a little. You're going to have a skyline that goes from darkest, darkest, and the skyline will get lighter as it gets towards the horizon, like this. And then you'll have the brightest part of the sky. Then I usually have like this. Then what I'll do is I'll take um, probably like the like this so you have a hard contrast then maybe go like this and you see how we're getting kind of a metal effect and uh, we'll do a little more white and kind of kind of the theory why that looks like chrome um, is because you've got your skyline reflecting and the skyline gets darker or gets lighter as it meets the land and then the land is going to be dark here and then it gets brighter towards the bottom I mean generally that's kind of you know my general approach to a chrome effect so what I think we need now is some darks over here and maybe one more light uh, it should also have a dark by this the closest part yeah alright now these we want to kind of imply that there's some distortion here too. Why is this? Oh, that's right, because I put that down there. I might just do this. There, get a little better chrome. Now I got to kind of think how, how I want to do this. These are smaller, so we're going to have this band of gradient only. It's going to get smaller as we go in. Um, I might ignore. Yeah, I'm going to ignore this little indentation and these are going to come in a little bit. Let's see if can I get can I get away with that? Yeah, it looks pretty good. So, what what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and I'm going to repeat these all the way down. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. I'm going to I'm going to also change this background color so I get that black. You can see that the black on the bump is now being kind of pushed in. Uh, do, 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 do. That actually looks pretty good. I would give me a pass on that. Okay, so now we want to capture just this middle section. It's kind of hard to see with that big. Alright, ease off that. I'm going to copy this. And again, I'm probably not going to say each one of my... You can see, wow, that actually turned out pretty nice for a kind of a a chrome effect. Let me take the grid off so we can see that. I'll right click. Yeah, yeah that turned out pretty chromish. Okay. Um, I don't know, when I was on Pixel, more when I was starting out people seemed to kind of like my chrome on my chrome effects, so I guess you want to know the secret to it. That's, uh, that's the big secret. <laughs> I think everything in terms of a a skyline that gets dark, lighter as it meets the horizon, and then a horizon that puts this hard, dark color against the brightest color, and then fades back out. That's that's the big secret, boys and girls, to the way I do chrome. <laughs> Wonder if I can. Now this is kind of a this pommel's kind of a an interesting case because we have this bending out, so I want to kind of capture that capture the contours of this and this isn't going to be symmetrical remember because uh, this is just kind of a, a matter of kind of mapping this reflection kind of in your head of how it would go I don't know if I want to that looks fairly good reflections get kind of weird when you're when you're thinking about contours like this. I think that's actually fairly good. I'm gonna see if this looks good. If not, I'll take it out. Yeah, it looks pretty. There's a lot of guesswork when you're designing kind of chrome because the chrome is all in your head. All right, I think that part is good. This, I don't know, should it come out a little bit like that? That's kind of weird. <laughs> 
If you don't like my chrome, uh, feel free to do it yourself because there's it's kind of a dark art as far as what's going to look good and what's not. Uh, this may look a little bit uh, a little bit chunky down here, so let's kind of clean this up. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that turned out reasonable. Uh, kind of chromish. No affiliation with Google. I don't like Google anyway. They're a bunch of freaking spies and everybody worships them for some reason. Okay. We'll thin that out a little bit. I don't know. I don't know if it's really necessary to put much more uh, chrome effect on this. I think that might kind of muddle it a little bit if we do that. This definitely needed some chrome effect because it's, you know, it's a curve, but this is kind of a flat piece. Uh... We should probably put some kind of red jewel in there, huh? Every sword, every g generic sword needs a giant red jewel in it. Does it ensure victory? No, but it looks cool, so we'll put that in there. Alright, so I'm going to use probably this color. And then I'm going to get kind of a secondary uh, reflection color in there. And I'm going to put in just some... Um, Just some reflect. This basically is, you know, you have a hard specular highlight there, and then when this highlight comes down and hits this part here, it's going to kind of lighten that area. So that's why I shaded that the way it did. Okay. All right. Let's see. I like that hilt. I like everything else. The sword's looking a little round, and that's because we have we need a, a, a basically a fourth color here. So we have one two, and then that color there. Actually, what I could do, I'm just going to play around with this now. No, no guarantees. Alright. I want to try just filling this in here. There. That doesn't look too bad, actually. Um, I don't know if I'm going to put any specular, or, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to put any reflection on this on this uh, sword part. We'll see. Um, I have some techniques for doing that, but I don't know if I want to do that just yet. I might actually come down and use... How bright is that? Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to use maybe that color. Uh -huh. And I'll draw. Oh, I'm trying to kind of match these. Wait a minute. Okay, so it's going to be like this then. Undo that. Like I said, this is kind of a full full length drawing feature. If you don't like this, just tell me and I won't do one again. Um, that looks reasonably good. This might be a little bit harsh. Uh, also, I guess one thing I could do is maybe just try tracing this out. One nice thing I like about graphics too over Oh, that actually looks pretty good. Yeah, why not? I might try a little dithering just to make it curve here. Let's see how that looks. Uh, I get the idea, but I don't know about the implementation of that. I'll leave that for now. Uh, why don't we go ahead and put some shine on this blade? Uh, do I want to use the line tool for this? Now, I could do some horizontal, yeah, why don't we do some horizontal stuff. Um, going back to my chrome model here, we want to select a dark color. That's a good one right next to it. And then we want to select, I might actually need, uh, that's the one I got, let's select this one. Uh, that's going to be too dark, I think. And I was when I started pixel art, I was a real stickler for Everything has to be low color, but you know, as long as, as long as it looks good, and you're not using a thousand colors, you know, that's all that matters. That looks fairly good. I don't know. I'm just and and shine. When you're doing shine like this, you really have to mess around with it a lot. So now we'll take this and we'll do that gradient. I, I don't want to say it's a formula. That gets a little bit. And you don't always want them the same either. That might not even look good. I don't think it looks that great. Um, let's bump this up a little bit here. Mm -hmm. 
see how that looks. Yeah, I think for this, I don't think I'm going to do a shine on the blade. I think the blade looks fine just as it is, but I really do like uh, the way the hilt turned out. The hilt turned out well. Um, as far as this dithering deal there, I think that's okay. It adds a little bit of interest and why am I stuck in drawing rectangles? Stop that. Uh, there we go. So we could use a lighter color, but I think it just adds a little bit of interest as you have this light that kind of bends down, kind of just tracing an implied transition. This is going to have kind of a, a transition from the sharp edge to this other weird shape here. So there's that. I guess I could maybe put some shadow in here. That might look nice. Um, there's a lot of, I don't want to say guesswork involved with pixel art, but there's a lot of eyeballing and you know what's what looks good for the sword might not be 100% mathematically accurate. No, that's actually not bad. We could that kind of even implies a little bit of um, a little bit of environmental reflection too, because um, having shadows like that in metal, people are gonna kind of mentally associate that with well it must be reflecting something in the background although they might not consciously do that let's see how that looks yeah yeah that's not bad yeah I, I think we'll just kind of imply that this blade is not a chrome finish like this but the blade is just more of a uh, you know kind of a matte type finished steel that's just the way the metal was finished so it's not going to have quite the chrome um, chrome effects you see here. Anyway, uh, we kind of tempted just to put another little, just some implied highlight on that. Some stuff like this really adds interest. Um, I mean, we could just draw the sword and say, okay, I'm done. But if it's not visually interesting, what's the point of it all, you know? So, I don't really, yeah. This, is, this blade is going to look like a blade that's kind of had some Good days and some bad days, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to put a second one down here. And I realize this is kind of a, a greenish blue from what I'm using, but we're kind of implying an environmental type reflection in the metal here. So maybe it'll get down a little bit like this. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. You know, I thought this was a little bit too teal, but it's kind of adds some visual interest. So uh, maybe we leave that. I don't know. Let me just try. I'm just trying something here. Ah, uh, you know, I don't think that looks great. What I would like to do is, I think if we take some of this nice white and we chip away at the middle of this, we'll get a nice metal effect too. Um, and the way you get good at kind of, you know, drawing chrome and stuff. I'm not saying I'm the best at chrome, but I do enjoy drawing chrome every once in a while. Um, the way you get good at drawing chrome. Yeah, that looks reasonable. Is by practicing. I mean, there's there's really no way around it. It's like anything else, you know. And you're constantly thinking about, you know, and reflecting pieces of the environment while you do this. And if I had a little bit better color selection, I could even take some of this, you know, this this wild environmental reflection stuff and put it down in here. But I think, you know, for that tutorial, which was holy cow, was supposed to be on mirroring something. <laughs> Uh, we ended up with a fairly decent looking sword, so I think, let me just double check this down here. There would be a little ridge of, a little ridge if this was inset, too, and I don't want to go to town on this, but it's kind of getting to the end of the tutorial. We'll take some, this piece here. So this is going to give an impression that around this jewel here, that it's kind of indented, it's inset. And I don't, I think the red is too close to that brownish color I'm using for the handle, so... What about an orange jewel? That oh, might be interesting. Well, an orange jewel would be interesting if I had... I just want this thing to stand out, it's so... Ugh. That looks terrible. Well, I tell you a color that would be good that we have plenty of is blue. 
Do I want to reuse some of this? But then it looks like it's metal. Not necessarily, though. Let's do that. Let's just give this a try. We're going to make this the brightest part. Hard, oh, that needs to be a hard specular highlight, doesn't it? And... Uh, did it, did it, did it. I'm just kind of thinking here what, what I want to do. I have this isn't my palette. This is, I think this might be one of Don Bringer's um, in his setup. But yeah, that blue stands out a little bit better. All right, and I think I'm going to call this done. There's a lot of stuff that could be that could be edited, changed. What are we running on? 20 minutes. Uh, 65 megabytes. That's pretty good. Oh. 30 minutes. Well, there's 30 minutes of drawing with uh, Ryan. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I think I'm calling this done. So have yourself a nice day and keep making art.